Oh, let's look through this together on paper. Okay, well, yeah, so the, the tricky thing about acids and bases is well, why do people find acids and bases so difficult? Because there are many different cases. Mm -hmm. Each of the individual cases is pretty simple, but all the different cases take a slightly different approach. For example, there's a strong acid by itself, there's a weak acid by itself, there's a strong base by itself, and there's a weak base by itself. There's a strong base added to another uh, to a strong acid. Um, there is a strong base added to a weak acid. Um, you can see there's many different possible permutations, and all of them take slightly different approaches, and that's what really messes people up. So one thing you want to make sure you ask yourself is, what situation am I in, and what's the technique for that? Well, the key thing I think you saw with the key situation is, we're in a situation where we are starting with both a weak acid and its weak conjugate. And we've been talking about what the approach is for that. When you have a weak acid and its weak conjugate, we just go straight to the henderson hasselbach equation. When you have both a weak acid and its weak conjugate, we can simply use the henderson hasselbach equation. So that's where we start for this problem. We don't even have to write down any chemical reactions. Uh, the henderson hasselbach equation is a shortcut that we can use here. How, how do we know that these are a weak acid and a weak base? Because they gave us the Ka. Only weak acids have Ka's, because those are the reactions that go to equilibrium. So we know, and of course they told us it was a buffer solution. So let's see what we get from the Henderson. Does that make sense, that we should use the henderson hasselbach equation? OK, so let's give that a shot. So you put the correct numbers on the top, good. And I'm glad to say that you didn't put these in brackets. We talked about how that wouldn't make sense. You have a calculator? Mm -hmm. No? Oh, OK. So. so one thing that makes sense to do first here is to calculate the pKa. Where's my What did you get for your pKa? pKa 3.37. So it would be an easy mistake to plug in the Ka here, but we need the pKa. And what did you get as the pH? Um, 
So what's the answer to part D? 3.5a. Yeah, we're done. We found that pKa. So this is very similar to the problems that we did before. So again, you have to start by asking which of the many different possible cases am I dealing with? Well, here we're dealing with the case where we have, where we're starting with both the weak acid and the weak base. Now again, you could do this using a start change end table and using the Ka. Uh, in fact, maybe it would be a good exercise to see how to do it that way, but we have a shortcut for this problem, which is that we can just plug in to the henderson hasselbalch equation. Now, so far, it looks like we didn't even have to use the fact that this was one liter, because they already told us the concentrations. They already told us the concentrations, and those are the numbers that we need to plug in over here, so it was really irrelevant. Um, what would the pH have been if this was a two liter solution? Same Same thing. Um, once, uh, if the concentrations are the same, that would still give us the same pH. So far, so good? Yes. All right, so should we look at the next part? Yes. Let me take a look at that part. E, uh, F. You want to skip E? Yes. Okay. We the writing of the equation. Oh, it, yeah, we can do the writing of the equation. So. Okay, so let's look at E. So we need now, we're adding a strong base and we want to write the chemical reaction for what's going to occur. So let's try writing that out. So the situation is that we're starting with that same buffer and we're adding sodium hydroxide to it. We want to write down what's the chemical formula for the reaction that now is going to take place. So let's try writing out that equation. You have some trouble with that? Oh, maybe I just can't read your writing. So what, what do you have written down there? And it's important to get this equation exactly right. Okay, good. Now let's talk through how we should think about that. Because it's very important to be able to write out that equation. So who should we write as the reagents here? Who's going to be reacting with each other? Well, clearly, one of the things that's going to be reacting is the sodium hydroxide. Strong bases are, well, are strong bases reactive or unreactive? Um, reactive. That's what strong means. So we know this is going to be reacting. So I'm going to put that on the reactant side. And who is it going to react with? Is it going to react with the acid or with the base? With the acid. That's right, because bases react with acids. So it wouldn't make sense to put the sodium nitrite over here, because then we have two bases, and those don't react with each other. Instead, we put the other acid, because this is a reaction that makes sense. And then what is the sodium hydroxide going to do to the acid? It's going to steal a proton. That's what bases do. They steal protons. So the hydroxide will take this proton and end up as water. And that will leave us with two spectator ions. We'll be left with a sodium spectator ion and a nitrite spectator ion. We may as well write those together. Like this. So in some perspectives, this can seem a little trivial, but it's actually very important to be able to easily write the chemical equation for what acid-base reaction is going to happen. One thing that might be confusing here is in the solution, 
we started with some sodium nitrite. But even though we already started with some sodium nitrite, I'm putting the sodium nitrite on the product side of this equation, not on the starting material side. And the reason is that even though we started with some sodium nitrite, that sodium nitrite isn't going through a reaction at this step. It's the nitric acid. Um, am I saying this wrong? It's the nitrous acid. It's the nitrous acid that is actually going to go through this reaction. So, uh, so this would be the right way to write that out. 